this video is to show you how to perform experiment K1, which is the kinetics of the hydrolysis reaction of an ester. We're going to be using ethyl acetate today. There isn't very much that is new in terms of equipment for this, just constant temperature baths. Most of it's going to be titration, which I hope you understand by now. We'll be beginning with getting some 100 mils of hydrochloric acid, which you get from the cubitainers over on the side. To get the hydrochloric acid that you need, make sure you've got the right box. You will find them in cubes here in Wahlberg 203. Please take an appropriate amount. I, I believe in this case you want 100 mils. And make sure that you turn the tap off so that we don't have dribbling happening. Acids are found in this room, 203. If you need bases, and you will need base for your titration, you'll find that in a cubitana next door in Wahlberg 202. We're going to be using ethyl acetate today. Your TA may have a different ester for you to use. Take the ethyl acetate, which you get from the solvent's yellow cupboard next door. Take five mils and put it into an Erlenmeyer flask. We'll also be mixing the ethyl acetate with five mils of methanol. Now, the methanol doesn't actually enter into the reaction. It's just there to make sure that the ethyl acetate actually mixes, whoops, that's a bit more than five mils, with the ester. They're not completely miscible. There we go. So. That's 10 mils of methanol ester mix and 100 mils of hydrochloric acid. These now come over here to one of the constant temperature baths. The temperature bath will be on when you reach it. This is the lowest temperature one that we have, which is um, 29 degrees, about 30. what you need to do is clamp these in the bath and leave them for about 10 minutes so that they get to bath temperature. You're going to be performing this experiment at three different temperatures, and this is the coldest one. Now, while these are sitting here equilibrating, let me talk a bit more about what you're going to be doing in general. You'll do the experiment three times over, once at 30, once at 40, and once at 50 degrees. And there we've got different temperature baths ready to go. Don't adjust the temperatures. They've been preset. The other thing you may notice is this sign here. Don't use masking tape to label your flasks. Now, I'm the only one here, so I haven't bothered labeling them. But when you're working with other people, use a marker. If you put masking tape on these, they soak off in the hot water, and it fouls the pump. We're now almost ready to begin the process of monitoring the titration. And we do this by a series of titrations. The first one is going to be immediately. I'm going to quench the reaction when it, when it starts by putting in some ice. This will slow it right down. So there we go, about 25 mils of ice. And add a little bit of water and some phenolphthalein, which you'll find over on the side bench. And I'm now ready for my process. I'm going to take this over to the heater, and you check using this for the first time that you've got the right temperature in your mixture. You only need to do this for the first time because once it's at temperature, it will stay there until the end of the reaction. Um, I'll also need my two mil pipette and a bulb. 
Now, once I've got this ready, I open the clamps, take my two mixtures, and when I'm ready to go, mix the two. You do this by pouring them between the two flasks. Do this three or four times, and you will now have a homogeneous reaction mixture. And at this point, start your stopwatch here so that we are now timing the reaction and put it back into one of the clamps. And this reaction mixture stays in this clamp at whatever the temperature of your bath is until the end of the reaction. Immediately, you want to take a two mil aliquot from the mixture. Okay, place it into the flask with the ice and the water and this has more or less quenched the reaction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I now swirl this around and titrate it against sodium hydroxide. You titrate this, get the record, and then at the timed intervals specified in the protocol, keep taking samples, treat them exactly the same way, add them to ice and titrate as promptly as you can. When ethyl acetate hydrolyzes, it produces ethanol and acetic acid. What you're actually titrating for is acetic acid. And the, as the reaction continues, you'll get more and more acetic acid. And so your titrations will get longer and longer. This first titration will be titrating the amount of HCl that you've already added. So you'll need to subtract the volume that you get for the first titration from all of your subsequent ones. You're doing this first for the 30 degree reaction because this one works slowest and you'll get yourself into the groove and good at doing these titrations on time. Once this is well underway, you can do it again at 40 and again at 50 degrees. Once you have finished doing the titrations, that is monitoring the ethyl acetate hydrolysis at three different temperatures, then you can clean up. All you need to do is put all of these down the sink with lots of running water. Please wash your glassware and away you go. You should now know how to monitor the hydrolysis of ethyl acetate by titrometric means.